Something is happening right now on our planet. The earth is changing. Not only is the earth changing, the sun, the moon, our entire solar system is undergoing an alteration. Something is coming. Some of you know this. You know it in your mind, you know it in your heart, you can feel it. In spite of everything that is happening right now that we can see, there are going to be things that when we see them, it will be very clear that there is going to be no more time for playing around. For the past several years, you may have noticed the changes in the sun. With the increase in photons and infrared rays comes the increase of irradiance and temperature. The sun has become brighter and hotter. And at the same time, on our planet, there has been an increase in bad weather, earthquakes, and volcanism. You see, no one knows the number of volcanoes that actually exist, but we do know that in the last 10,000 years there has been at least 1,500 eruptions worldwide, with at least 500 volcanoes active today. Right now, there are at least 30 volcanoes that are erupting around the world, with about another 30 that are on warning. Now the majority of these volcanoes are found in the ocean floor along the Pacific Rim, known as the Ring of Fire. Understand that this is not a matter that should be taken lightly, as these oceanic volcanoes can trigger major earthquakes and tsunamis. Look at what happened to Japan in 2011, and the end result of that was a nuclear meltdown. So as our planet continues to go through these cataclysmic changes, we all need to pay close attention because we are all being threatened by what's coming from above us and what's coming from underneath us. So let us explore volcanism, or what I like to call the real hot topic. Vulcan, the Roman god of metalworking and fire. The name is from the Latin Vulcanus. The Italian Vulcano, or Burning Mountain, would be used to describe Mount Etna, which the Romans believed to be the forge of Vulcan. Now a volcano, simply put, is an opening or vent. It is literally a well that taps into the molten rock below the Earth's crust. There are several types. The fissure volcano is a linear volcanic vent that could be just a few meters wide, but many kilometers in length. Something similar to that of a crevasse in a glacier. But instead of water, you have hot basaltic lava that works its way up to the surface and erupts out of these tears in the earth without the dramatic explosions. Active fissures are usually observed along rifts in places such as Iceland and Hawaii. Next we have the Shield Volcano. It is given this name due to its shape. They have effusive eruptions, meaning that the lava does not explode out of the volcano. It pours or gushes out like an old water fountain, creating a gentle slope cooling down to give the volcano its broad dome shape. Again, you can find these types of volcanoes in Iceland, Hawaii, you can find them in Africa and the Galapagos. You can find them on Mars, which is home to the largest known shield volcano in our solar system. Now we come to the explosive volcanoes. And on the low end, we have a cinder cone volcano. These volcanoes have what's called mafic magma, which is low in viscosity and silica. Or in other words, it is a thinner, hotter type of lava that is composed of a lower amount of quartz, or the Earth's crust. You see what happens is the pressure that is created by the gases from this hot magma builds up, so much so that the Earth cannot contain it any longer. So it explodes. And when it explodes, it releases these gases into the atmosphere, shooting out chunks of lava into the air. Some of these chunks cool down mid-air 
and then begin to solidify creating what's called a lava bomb. As these chunks or cinders of mafic rock touch down, they pile up to form the cone-shaped mound of the volcano. This is really just a small firecracker of a volcano due to the composition of its magma. However, once you get into the felsic magma, now we're talking about some real fireworks. One of the most common types of volcano is the composite or stratovolcano. These are the ones created by felsic magma. This is actually a cooler magma than the rest and it is high in viscosity and silica, making the volcano a ticking time bomb when these things erupt. Not only do they explode lava and chunks of rock into the air, they put out enormous amounts of dangerous gases into the air such as sulfur creating acid rain. They cause earthquakes and tsunamis, ash falls, not to mention the pyroclastic flows. Oh no. You think that's just some big cloud of smoke? No, that's ash with gravel-like bits of hot lava rock. And this is what kills most people who die at the hands of a volcano. There is no covering up or holding your breath. If you didn't run when you were supposed to, and this pyroclastic flow gets to you, it's over. You are now a statue. Now, after this volcano destroys everything around it, including the small town of idiots living below it, the remaining rock above the magma chamber collapses, or settles into the now half-empty magma chamber, to form what is known as a caldera. So the majority of active volcanoes in the world make up the ring of fire. So you will see the number of earthquakes continue to increase in this area. Volcanism will increase in this area, leading to tsunamis and more mass die-offs. Think about it. There is an alarming number of volcanoes erupting right now in the ocean. So now you have these mass fish die-offs. All the mammals are trying to move out to take their chances on land. Not to mention Fukushima. That ocean is a nightmare. And the Pacific Ocean is connected to all the other oceans. The water temperature is rising. And if it continues, and it will, the sea level will rise. This means an increase in storm surges and higher tides. The sea ice melts, causing higher Arctic temperatures, and so you have melting of permafrost and an increase in surface temperature. This is going to cause further freak migration of species, including land animals and us. This is going to wreak havoc on the wetlands and cause an increase in drought on coastal areas. Oh, you're going to see some things, folks. If there were monsters out there that lived off food from the ocean, where do you think they would go to get food if that supply ran out? What do you think people are going to do when these changes affect our food supply, which already began several years ago? Do you want to know what's happening? The earth is breaking apart, literally. Think about the number of sinkholes opening up around the world. And you need to know that the Earth can't just do this on its own. It's getting help from outside forces. Namely the sun, moon, the cosmic rays from magnetars, and other astral bodies. It weakens the magnetosphere, allowing these particles to penetrate. And when they do, the Earth and everything on it and in it are affected. And when you start seeing the auroras, in places you should not, then you will know the time is close indeed. The supervolcano of Yellowstone National Park seems to be waking up. It's too early to tell, but when you have frequent earthquake activity in that area, boiling water and smoke seen in places it has not been seen before, that's a problem. And the bigger problem is that people don't see it as a problem until it's too late. And then you've got a problem.